from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Like music, now, here's Wendy! Let's get started. It's time for. I love you more. Thanks for turning out. So, um, I mean, my commute this morning was so bomb. Me and Kevin are floating along. The traffic's pretty good. Whoopi Goldberg in the view uh, makeup room. That was us that you thumbs up. I don't know whether you knew it was us or not. Your window was down. We were floating along, listening to our music, snapping neck. <laughs> and so here we go, we're commuting together. Whoopi, you were a bright spot in my morning commute. The sun is out. Not as warm as I thought that it would be, but the sun is out here in Manhattan. The traffic, just the, dig me out of the funk. <laughs> I wish I had happy things to share with you, but um, I just gotta, have, I gotta go with what you wanna know. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, hsn.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pants. And my funky sneakers, too. hsn.com. A little something I do when I'm not doing anything. Design stuff. <laughs> Kanye West wants to use the mugshot of the doctor who operated on his mother before she died as the cover of his new album. Follow the beats. This is the mugshot. Now, as you, well, this is a mugshot. This is not a, you know, mugshots are always a public domain. So Kanye can do what he wants with the picture and the doctor has no say so in it. The doctor is demanding though that he stops using the photo. The reasons why? Well, first of all, let's back up and talk. It was back in 2007 that the lovely Donda West died of complications from the full package. A tummy tuck, a liposuction, breast implants, you know, I'm foggy in the head because that was so long ago. I thought that she died on the operating table. Um, no. According to Dr. Adams, Dr. Adams says that uh, everything went well and Donda was sent home. Kanye was nowhere around, but Donda was left in the care of Kanye's cousin. And it's alleged that Donda went into eating regular food right away. I mean, even back then, I don't know if you remember me on the radio, we talked about this. The chicken, the cheeseburgers and everything. You know, and surgery, no surgery. So I'm speaking from a place of compassion. A lot of you all want this quick fix, but you don't know how to take care of it. You can't do that. I mean, you need somebody to nurse your wounds. You need to make sure stitches aren't busted open. You can't watch anything too funny on TV when you have a tummy tuck. Cause you will bust a gut literally, okay? <laughs> Then the wrapping and the dressing, I mean, I'm speaking from experience, I know. So the doctor isn't necessarily the one who was at fault for Donda. The cousin thought Donda was doing well, so the cousin decides to go to a party. You can't be left alone after surgery or after having a baby. You can't, people have to do things for you. This is a very, very sad story. So Dr. Um, Jane Adams, that's his name, his, his first name is Jan. 
Remember he used to have that um, that uh -huh. male The View <laughs> yep. back in the day? Do you remember <laughs> the, the male half. show? It was it was uh, the other half. Uh huh. It was with Mario Lopez. Yeah. Yep, all them. You remember? There are so many talk shows that have come and gone. Thank you for keeping me here. <laughs> Damn. So Dr. Jan was one of the stars of this show, plus he had a thriving uh, plastic surgery business. And Dr. Jan posted a very long open letter to Kanye demanding and blasting that, um, that he, you know, if you're writing and you really wanna heal, you shouldn't use negative, negative things from your past as a part of the healing. Uh, look, unless you've lost a parent, you really don't know Kanye's pain, especially under such duress. You know, Donda, you know, I've met Donda before when she was alive. She didn't need any of that, that stuff, but you know, there are pressures when you get in front of these cameras and when you're the mother of, when you're standing next to Tina Knowles and you know, wow, maybe I don't measure up. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying this in a joking way. It's, there's pressures to be a Hollywood mom. So thank you to The Blast for the letter. Um, Dr. Uh, Jan has since lost his license, but not because of Kanye, because of multiple DUIs. Yeah. It was suggested in our morning meeting, well, maybe he was DUIing during the surgery. Uh, it wasn't the surgery, it was the aftercare. It was the aftercare. How well, um, I'm saddened by this. Like, Kanye, are you serious to use this man's picture? I'm not saying you shouldn't be angry and I'm not saying you're wrong, but really, for the cover of your album? Come on, man. Get back on your meds. And some people were suggesting that Kanye use this particular picture for the cover of his book. I mean, album. I'm gonna let you all do all the laughing today because I find nothing funny. I'm still pissed at the traffic. I'm confused because you know I like my rough um, rap music. We go from the Wu-Tang Clan and you know whatnot, and Fat Joe and, and all Snoop, and then we get to Nas. Has Nas called the Bureau? Has Nas said anything? Nas hasn't called. I believe maybe he, he no, posted just, a photo of him and his son. No. But that's not like he didn't call us. No, he doesn't have to call us. Say something to somebody. Right. You know, I didn't beat Khalees. Right. I'm not a beater. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whose world is this? I'm like, maybe not yours. <laughs> represent, represent. I'm like, represent what? Oh. Anyway, here's the picture that I think Kanye should use for the cover of his album. Yeah. Right? And on another note, which is completely ridiculous, but it's going down. Daz Dillinger, if you don't know him, Daz is part of the Dog Pound, Daz, corrupt, head corrupt, a Snoop's cousin out on the West Side. Um, <laughs> well, there's heavy gang affiliation amongst uh, uh, Daz and, and others. I'm watching my uh, words very carefully because this, this is a very disgusting story. It is being alleged that Daz has put a hit out on Kanye. It's come from a few different sources. Plus, he was dopey enough to put it on the gram. If you're gonna kill somebody, why do you put it on Instagram? <laughs> why don't you just do it on the low and get away with it like everybody else does? And don't kill this man. Snoop, Snoop, can you just walk in, Snoop, and, and talk your cousin off of this ledge? You can't do this. And how out of your mind are you to share something like that with the world? So Kanye knows the score, and your dad is like, 
you better not ever come to Cali. You better not ever, and, and talking to the other Crips, like, I better not see you at any of his concerts. Like, th this is real, real. So Kanye was out last night. I don't know whether he was in LA or not, but had um, pretty tight security. Keep stuff offline. Keep stuff offline. And please, leave Kanye alone. The man is not well. The man is not well. On another road, Daz, no. Daz, is that a recent picture of you? Still cute. Let me see that again. Okay, now. A little thick, I like the eyebrows, the whole bit, yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving along. So the Jersey Shore's Ronnie. You know Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie dated um, Sammy Sweetheart when they were together. They had a very volatile relationship which did include physical fighting on the Jersey Shore, the original one. So Ronnie has moved on with his life but apparently he's got this girlfriend that they recently broke up after a very nasty fight. It, again, online. This is unbelievable, you all make my job too easy. <laughs> too easy. So this is his chick. Word is, is that she's a former stripper. I don't know. I don't know. And word is, is that there's a lot of cheating in the relationship. Anyway, she pops up pregnant, this Jenny, this girl, Jen. So she's pregnant. She just had the baby a month ago. They've been arguing ever since. There's an episode last week. And now you know all these episodes are taped in advance. So she's in the house minding her own business, looking at the TV and seeing what? L l l cheating to the highest of cheativity. And I don't care that you didn't have a happy ending. <laughs> Going someplace and feeling someone up is good enough. You cheated. Your girl was at home seven months pregnant with your baby or somebody else's, see? I, look, I am not sure. <laughs> Just take a, piece, take a look at this uh, treat. You're beautiful. I'm like, like, I believe me, I wanted to finish before we started from the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm safe. It's hard to just constantly say no, 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 when it's like every girl in the club wants to talk to you. So it's like being in the money machine and then the money's just flying everywhere like, and you're just trying to grab all of it. That's what it's like. like. You're just gonna stand there like this? No, you're gonna try to grab all the money. Plus, clearly he was high out of his mind on something <laughs> and not weed. You know what I mean? And guys who can't finish usually can't because they're so turned up off something that they gotta get back to you. Anyway, this past weekend, Ronnie, look, I don't care about these people. I'm telling you a story. What do I care? <laughs> I'm going home to mind my own business. I mind my own business and that's why I can just sit here and just talk like, mm-hmm, okay. So this past weekend, Ronnie posted um, something to the effect, did you see it? it says, can't turn a natural born hoe into a housewife. If you find them in the gutter, then leave them in the gutter. Yeah, buddy. Hashtag facts. And then she blasted back. Can't turn a cokehead into a father. <laughs> I got my smile back, yeah. I know Ronnie, I've met him before, he's been here on the show. A girl, I don't know who you are, I don't know anything about you all's relationship, but you know, it's pretty disgusting that you cheated in public like that. Um, I suggest you all take a paternity test if there's all kinds of hoish behavior going on. And you need help, sir, because you are now a father of somebody's baby, if, <laughs> if, if Maury tells you you are. Grow well, up. Well. Disgusting. Isn't TV the best? People get all high and then the cameras are rolling. They do all of our work for us. All we have to do is sit back with popcorn and laugh. Oh. Okay. Then yesterday, 
I'm minding my own business. <laughs> making, making um, you know, we had um, those mini burgers, mini burgers, mini bun sliders. <laughs> I'm making my sliders, I'm having a good time. I put some kimchi in the pan with some, I call them kimchi, I love kimchi. Do you love kimchi? It's yeah. very good for you. And my sliders are from a brand like the Meatless, you know what I mean? Good and juicy though, not dry. So I made a whole bunch, me and my Kevins, and we eat a lot. Tried to give one to the dog, he turned his nose up to me. <laughs> what? Why is it, how can you make a dog eat like real food? We go out to restaurants and stuff like that. I look over and I see there's a bone left. I so badly wanna be like my parents were back in the day, always bringing doggy bags, like the, the good bones. You go to the butcher, you get that good bone stick. My dog doesn't care. <laughs> a real snob. Anyway, then yesterday, like I'm saying, I was minding my own business, and then this pops up. They got into a fight, which played out on Instagram Live. Yes. Can we take a look at that? Let's zoom in on that. Why don't you show that? Why don't you want to show that? Why don't you want to show that? Huh? Why don't you look, look? Why don't you want to show that? Huh? Get. Put your hands on me again. Seriously? Seriously. Put your hands on me again. I dare you. I dare you. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna glue that. Don't touch me. Stop. Stop. You got it. You got it. Get off of me. Stop. Stop. I see he was turned up again. All that breathing and sweating. I know the telltale signs. I've lived. So he apologized on social media as usual. Uh, um, but you know what, Ronnie? And you know what, girl? You attract what you are. Oh. All right. I don't wanna stay down here. Can we just take a moment to laugh? <laughs> really, you can't laugh? <laughs> well then take a tissue out and cry. So R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. Um, his time may be finally up. So, his assistant, his publicist, and lawyer, all women, quit. The second most valued radio personality in the country, next to me when I was on. Tom Joyner, I'm Josh and Tom. Tom is an icon, friend to the show as well. Tom has vowed to stop playing R. Kelly music. Now, Tom is syndicated, and that's a big deal. This, this is a big deal. This is a big shot radio guy. He's not on overnights on some station you never heard of. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. Tom is not gonna play R. Kelly. <laughs> and then, there's a group of really powerful black women, including Shonda Rhimes, Eva Longoria, Ava DuVernay, Kerry Washington, Viola Davis, they've all announced this campaign that they're behind, Mute R. Kelly. Over the weekend, organizers of an upcoming performance in Chicago canceled the R. Kelly performance, and Robert is still talking. God, I'm conflicted, I'll talk, but just, just look what he says about, the, about uh, this concert being canceled. Um, I don't know why they canceled the show. Uh, I never heard of a show being canceled because of rumors, but I guess it's the first time for everything, so I apologize to you guys, and in the meantime, I'm gonna try to get to the bottom line of it, you know, uh, as far as my lawyers are concerned, to see exactly what happened and why I was canceled. This story to me is equally as sad as the Michael Jackson tragedy. It's more sad than Prince. This is a very, very sad story. You know, I met R. Kelly. I told you this when I came back off of my three weeks um, to get well. 
But while I was uh, home, you know, doing nothing, all of a sudden the phone rings to, man to my management saying, you know, R. Kelly wants to see Wendy. I didn't know whether I was gonna get jumped or what. <laughs> I mean, cause I've been on the radio, been around, and for those of you all who know, you know that I know. And, and did a whole lot of talking about R. Kelly back in the day. And I was looked at as the crazy one and you guys insisted on still stepping in the name of love. <laughs> anyway, so it's midnight. Me and Kevin, we come into the city. I walk into, it was a studio. And when I walked in, um, R had on um, a, a white snorkel, a hat, dark glasses. And he greeted me with a hug and a drink. And the conversation that I had with him, I promised him confidentiality. I, I promised him confidentiality. But he told me stuff, and I know stuff. And I, I'm trying to grow up and keep confidence, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I know stuff. And the interview ended with another hug. I was absolutely confused and rode back to Jersey in silence. Um, now, no, I'm not gonna tell you something. I, didn't I just say? I know you see me up here gum flapping, but I've told you before, in real life, I am the most confidential person you will ever know. You tell me something, and I'm not saying anything. He asked me for his word. He asked me for his word. His manager was there, my manager was there, and me and Robert, and all we did was talk. He told me I could ask him anything. He wasn't sour, he wasn't, he was loving as a matter of fact. And I asked him everything. And he answered everything. <laughs> and more. So my question to you, and I'm serious about this. I would love to do a sit down with him, you know, so you can see him talk for himself. But if I do that, and you all hate on me, and aren't watching my show, look Rob, I'm not messing up my money for you. <laughs> okay? I'm not. But, would you be offended, would you be offended if I, Wendy, had a sit down conversation? All right, well, okay, well clap if you'd be offended. All right, management, get to it. Come on, let's make this happen. Come on, let's make this happen. There was something about our conversation. When I tell you he told me everything and more, he told me everything and more, and I wasn't there as Wendy the Big Mouth. I was there like, huh? Oh, okay. All right, come on, pick up your spirits. We've got more great show for you today. Fabulous. Even. Daphne Oz is in the Wendy kitchen. She's gonna show us some healthy foods to make your skin beautiful. But up next, Katie Couric is here, so grab a snack. Yeah. Come on.